are you sick and tired of not sticking to the resolutions that you set every single year? Are, come on, I know that you're totally over the fact that every year on December 31st, you write down a list of things that you're going to stick to, and then before you know it, it's the next year, and you're sitting down writing down the exact same things all over again because you just didn't stick to them, and you let them fall off, and now you're back to square one. Yeah, that was me for years and years and years. So I decided to make it my goal to come up with the best New Year's planning strategy ever known to man and womankind. And I have been able to successfully stick to every single commitment that I've made with myself for the past couple of years with this blueprint that I mapped out. It is a three-part blueprint called the Best Year Blueprint. It is a no resolutions necessary strategy to mapping out the best year of your life. And it works. How do I know it works? Because I'm the guinea pig and I've used it for the past couple of years and I've accomplished everything that I said that I would do and more. So what's this mean to you? Well, it's really, really good news because I've actually created a totally free guide and a video where I'm explaining my three-part best year blueprint so that you can go and use this strategy to create the best year of your life too. So all you have to do to go get the free guide and the video is go to thebestyearblueprint.com. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's thebestyearblueprint.com. Go to that link and download your free guide. And then after you download it, there's going to be a special invitation to you to join me for my pre-New Year's planning party where we're all going to get on Zoom and do our Best Year Blueprint strategy together. So, I mean, my gosh, you don't want to miss this. If you're somebody that loves goal setting and actually wants to stick to your goals this year, you definitely want to join me for my pre-party where we will do our Best Year Blueprints together. So, in order to sign up and download your free guide, free video, of the best year blueprint, go to the best year blueprint.com. Can't wait to celebrate the very best year with you ever of all time. I would envision that I was walking with my love of my life, or I would envision that I was walking as the woman that I wanted to be, that had everything that I wanted. And I would start to walk as that person. My body language would change. I would feel like my anatomy changed. I would shift into the version of myself that I wanted to be and I would practice being her and I would practice feeling the feelings that she would feel. Now, what that does is it actually starts to change your subconscious mind because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a real memory and a fake one. It makes you wonder, wonder what if, what if I could feel this way? What if I could walk around the planet as if I was the person that had everything that I want? Why are we waiting to step into being that person later when we can step into being that person now? What if today was the day that you dared yourself to do what you've always wanted? Welcome to the I Dare You podcast. I'm your host, Jen Gottlieb. And together, we're going to step outside of our comfort zones and into our best lives one dare at a time. So come on, I dare you to dive right on in. Hello, fam. Welcome back to the I Dare You podcast. Today is a good day. I'm back from my wedding. I am now officially a missus. I got married over the weekend in Miami to my love, Mr. Chris Winfield who was actually just on the last podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed that or a little car ride. If you didn't listen to that podcast episode, it's pretty damn good. It's literally like being a fly on the wall in the car with me and my then fiance now husband, Chris, talking about pretty much everything. And actually, I didn't edit that podcast and I purposely didn't even listen to it before it was posted because I knew that if I listened to it, I would want to edit things out and not be as vulnerable and not share as much with you guys. And you know what? I was like, I want to be as open as humanly possible. And I know that everything that we discussed in that car was something that someone needed to hear, whether it was our complete and total honesty about our difficulties as partners in life and in business and how we move through it. Or like some really behind the scenes stuff about our business and what wasn't working in the beginning and how we, how we moved through it, how we fixed it or didn't fix it. And the stuff that we struggled with really in a big way in the beginning of our relationship and our business and the stuff we still struggle with now. So we were a real open book. If you haven't listened to that episode, I highly recommend that you do. I'm just praying to God that it turned out okay because I didn't even listen to it. 
So today's episode, we're going to talk about my favorite activity in the entire world to make shit happen. And I have talked about this a lot, and a lot of people have listened to my advice on this specific topic and have made a lot of magical things happen. And when I tell you what it is, you're going to be like, wait, Jen, what? Are you serious? I just have to do that and things are going to happen for me or I'm going to manifest everything that I want. And I'm going to say, I don't guarantee anything, but I know for a fact that my truth is that this one activity has helped me create so much in my life. And not only has it helped me create so much in my life, it's also helped me to get clear on things, to work out issues, to come up with ideas, to get in the pocket and in the zone for keynote talks or for tough conversations. It's basically my answer to absolutely every single problem on the face of the planet. And that is to go for a walk. And you may be thinking, Jen, what the hell? I'm listening to a podcast all about going for a walk. Um, no thanks. But hear me out because I want to tell you one specific story on how I learned about these specific types of walks I'm about to teach you and how it changed everything for me. Back about, I don't know, a lot of years ago, and I was when I was single and living in New York City, I used to do this thing on Saturday nights specifically where I would cancel all my plans or say no to my friends and opt out for any activity that involved other humans. And I would all by myself get on the subway and go all the way downtown and get out on the subway at like a random spot downtown. I lived uptown and I would put my headphones in, I would put on some music and I would walk all the way from downtown to the Upper West Side where I lived. And that would usually take about an hour and a half to walk all the way up. And I would just watch the city change and walk listening to podcasts or listening to music. And one day I decided to do this specific little game with myself because I was I was really, really craving to meet, have, find love and meet the person that I wanted to be with at that time. And I was going on all these terrible dates and it just wasn't working for me. And I was feeling like I was going to be alone forever. And I was really having a lot of self-doubt. So I decided to play a game that I would pretend that I was walking with the love of my life. And, you know, I did all of these visualization exercises in my room and in my bed and I meditating and, you know, sitting still. And I figured, what if I just envisioned what it would be like to be walking as if I was walking next to the love of my life? So I did it once and I put on some music and in New York City, you can totally talk to yourself and nobody thinks you're crazy because it's New York City. But I I would just, I closed my eyes for a second and I envisioned that my six foot tall man was standing next to me holding my hand and we were walking back from a date. And I put on the music and I walked as if I was walking with him. And I felt the way that I would feel as if we were walking together. And I started to feel just so grateful and so in love and so on a high and just feeling like I was floating and I was happy and joyful. And all of those feelings started to flood my body. And I was walking as if I was the woman that was madly in love. And I felt all those feelings of love and joy. And it's so crazy because we can actually make ourselves feel feelings that that wouldn't exist normally if because that thing wasn't necessarily real. But our mind is so powerful. Visualization is so powerful that for the entirety of the walk, I was walking home with the love of my life that I had yet to meet that was an envision, an imaginary friend at that time. And you may be thinking, holy shit, Jen, okay, you're batshit crazy. Why am I even listening to you? But what that did, is I, I started to do it a lot. And at any time I was going for a walk, I would go for a walk down by the river, by my house. And I would envision that I was walking with my love of my life, or I would envision that I was walking as the woman that I wanted to be, that had everything that I wanted. And I would start to walk as that person, my body language would change. I would feel like my anatomy changed. I would shift into the version of myself that I wanted to be and I would practice being her and I would practice feeling the feelings that she would feel. Now, what that does is it actually starts to change your subconscious mind because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a real memory and a fake one. Just like I said, if you can start thinking thoughts as if you already have that thing, your body will actually start to feel those feelings uh, in real time as, as if it's actually realistic. Just like if you envision sucking on a lemon and you can start to like taste the lemon or I mean, I'm going to get sexual for a hot second, but we can have orgasms in our sleep without even touching ourselves. That's how powerful the mind is. And the mind can produce the feelings of having the thing that we want 
even if we're not actually having that thing. And that tricks the subconscious to believing it's yours. And that, if you listened to my episode all around law of attraction and manifestation, is the thing that initiates the action steps that we need to take to get the thing that we want. So I was basically practicing having the love of my life on these walks, having all the things that I wanted to have. Like, So it, it would get even further when I would start to do these walks um, regularly. And then I would start to envision that me and my hunky man were walking back to our apartment at this very specific building on uh, West 72nd Street. And we had this penthouse with floor to ceiling windows and we were walking home and um, and and we could work from anywhere, and we were a power couple, and we and I spoke on stages, and and we worked together, and all these things that I have now, I would envision on these walks that I had them, and I would walk as if I was the woman that had all of those things. And every time I went for those walks, I would get goosebumps all over my body, tears would come to my eyes, I would walk as if I was that person, and I would feel completely different when I got home. I would feel a little bit more like it was a little bit more possible where when I first started doing the walks, I felt like I was never going to meet anybody. Like it was never happening for me ever. And then when I started walking as if I was that person and practicing feeling those feelings that I would have when I accomplished everything that I wanted and when I got everything that I wanted, it started to feel a lot more realistic. Now, the really cool thing is that when Chris and I first met, we went for a lot of walks. We would go out on dates and we would walk all the way home. Now, the crazy thing was, is one of the first walks that we ever took, we went all the way downtown to a restaurant in Flatiron, and we walked back uptown to my place on the Upper West Side, and the path that we walked was the exact same one that I would always walk by myself, and this time, the person that I was walking with was not a fake person. It was a real person, and he was holding my hand, and he was making me feel the exact same way that I practiced feeling on my wonder walks by myself. Now, I just used the term wonder walks. Yes, this is what I call them now. I used to call them manifestation walks. I like the term wonder walks so much better because it makes you wonder. Wonder what if? What if I could feel this way? What if I could walk around the planet as if I was the person that had everything that I want? Why are we waiting to step into being that person later when we can step into being that person now. Now, I also use Wonder Walks when I'm preparing for keynote speeches. And for those of you who are public speakers or who are creators or who are uh, on video or create podcasts or even write books or create any kind of content that other people are going to see, it's, it's really, really powerful to be able to walk around the planet and practice your stuff and get your stuff into your body while you're walking. So whenever I do a keynote talk, no matter what, non-negotiable, I go for a wonder walk in the morning and that's how I prepare. I don't usually do a heavy workout before my keynote speeches. I just go for a wonder walk. And what I do for my wonder walk is I go through my talk as if I'm on the stage while I'm either walking on the treadmill or walking around the hotel that I'm staying at or walking around the block and I'll just envision that the audience is in front of me as I walk and I'm in my outfit that I'm wearing and I'm saying my talk out loud as I walk and envisioning that I'm on that stage and practicing as I walk. And there is a difference between practicing in your head or practicing standing still or practicing sitting down and practicing while you're moving. While you're moving your body, there is this weird connection that happens between your body and your mind. And I feel like my ideas just get like cemented into my being when I'm walking. And I come up with a lot more cooler creative ideas when I'm moving and I'm walking. Because when you move your body, you start to move your thoughts. And your thought thoughts can just flow through you more easily. This is just my truth. I know a lot of you can relate to this. And if you can, if you're like, Jen, I totally agree. I'm so with you on this. When I'm moving and when I'm walking is when I come up with the greatest ideas. Then I want you to DM me and just agree with me because here's the thing. I'm never going to share with you anything that I don't know to be true for me. So this is just stuff that works for me and I'm just sharing it with you, hoping that it will work for you too. But Wonder Walks have changed my life. I, d I did a Wonder Walk when I was so nervous about getting my book deal. I would just walk around envisioning that I was holding my finished book what it would feel like to hold that book as I walked. And I would walk and I would hold the book and I would say, congratulations, Jenny, you did it, you did it. And I would just feel what it would feel like to walk around as a published author. And I did it. I did that every day when I was really anxious. And it really helped with my anxiety when I didn't know if I was going to get a book deal because I would practice being a published author and I would feel the way that it felt. So that feeling of succeeding didn't feel far away. It felt like it was mine. And those walks are so cool because I actually, I did this cool thing where I videoed one of my wonder walks and me talking to myself so that I could share, with, share it with everybody once my book was published as a really cool like piece of content or an experiment to prove that wonder walks work because they really do. And I've done 
Wonder walks for everything. Like I said, for my book, when I was worried about it for, um, my wedding, I did wonder walks when I was, I I would walk around the block listening to the song that I was going to walk down the aisle to and just experience feeling the feelings that I wanted to feel when I was walking down the aisle. And I did wonder walks before I ever met Chris, before I even had this business where I was just walking as if I was the person that made a lot of money. And like, my body language changed. The way I stood changed. Cadence of my heartbeat, it changed. I was more excited. And then when you're done with your walk, you just feel invigorated. You feel like more is possible. And it seeps into the subconscious and you start taking action in a different way. When you start to navigate the world as the person that already has everything that you want. So my dare for you today is to go on a wonder walk. Now, if it's too cold outside, get on a treadmill and you can do a wonder walk on the treadmill. Don't worry about if people are looking at you, put on your music and walk around, walk on that treadmill as if you are the person that has everything that you want. How does that person walk? How does that person breathe? What does that person think when they're walking? embody that person. If you can go outside, it's even better. Go for a walk outside, put on your favorite song and walk as if you have the thing that you want. Practice doing that. Do it consistently. Do it once a week. But my dare for you is not to go cray cray. It's just to do it once. Do it once and you will see what I mean. You will see how powerful it feels. It can be for 20 minutes, 20 minutes for, you know, once a week start. And then maybe you'll want to go every single day. In fact, before I did this podcast, I was downstairs walking on the treadmill for 20 minutes, just being the person that has a badass baller podcast and envisioning what it was like to finish doing this episode. And I talked through this episode on the treadmill. And so when I got up here, I was completely and totally prepared to knock it out of the park. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I think I did. And I hope that I gave you some a cool tool that you can have in your toolkit of things to help you get into the pocket when you're about to speak or create a piece of content or write Um, And also a cool tool to be able to help you manifest or create everything that it is that you want and embody being that person that you want to become and being that person now and practicing that because that person already exists within you. You can create all of those feelings on your own. You don't need outside sources to create those feelings. You can do it by yourself. You just have to practice it. And going on Wonder Walks really helps you to do that. So I dare you to go take a wonder walk today. When you're on your wonder walk, please take a photo and tag me on Instagram at Jen underscore Gottlieb and tell me that you're on your wonder walk. I want to see you doing it. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Go share it with somebody that you think would enjoy it. And I will see you next time on the I Dare You podcast. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the I Dare You podcast. I'm so grateful you chose to spend this time with me, but I'm even more grateful for your future self that you are building one dare at a time. So my first dare for you is to subscribe to the show and then share it with a friend who you think needs to step a little bit more outside their comfort zone and into their best lives. They'll thank you for it. I'll see you next time on the I Dare You podcast.